In this video, we're going to talk all about cold traffic. We're going to talk about goals for cold traffic and different offers that you can make to people who have never heard of your business. So a few things to keep in mind. Cold traffic really is the lifeline. It's, it's the new blood that you're going to be putting into your business. Cold traffic might not seem as exciting to a lot of people because usually the sale doesn't happen um, you know, it, with these ads that you'll see in the video. Uh, but cold traffic, in my opinion, is the most important aspect of your entire system. If you aren't reaching out to new people in your market, you're never going to acquire new leads to help grow your business. So cold traffic, obviously very important, uh, something to keep in mind. If you have a brand new business, you must start with cold traffic. You know, you don't have anything else to leverage. That's totally fine. You have a clean slate, uh, but this is your starting point. Even if you have an existing customer base or website traffic or, you know, um, an existing business at all, you're still going to want to pay really close attention to this because if you aren't running cold traffic, again, you're, you're not putting new blood into your business and you don't want your business to become stale because you're not looking at the bigger picture. So to go back to the funnel image that we talked about in lesson one, cold traffic is definitely the awareness stage. So we're at the top of the funnel here. All you're doing with cold traffic is creating awareness. You're creating awareness for your business. You're creating awareness for your prospect that they maybe they have an issue that you're able to solve. You're catching their attention. You're giving them value. You're establishing yourself as an authority and you're gaining trust and you're building a relationship um, with, with this new person that essentially just met you. Keep in mind, this doesn't mean that you would ever take your product or service straight to cold traffic. Um, a lot of people try this um, you know, and, and say that, that traffic doesn't work because they're not making sales. But really the issue is you're not at the point in the relationship to go ahead and offer um, you know, whatever you're selling to this person who has never met you before. It's like meeting someone at a bar and asking them to marry you. Not that no one's ever done that, but usually that wouldn't be the route that, that people would take to develop and, and build a lasting relationship. So really think of cold traffic as the, hey, you know, nice to meet you. My name's Molly. Here's a little bit about myself, etc. So you're going to want to use cold traffic to introduce your brand to your target market. You want to give them value. You want to build trust and you want to establish yourself as an authority in your niche. So now we're going to cover the goals of cold traffic. So this is really what you're trying to accomplish with these campaigns. So the first one is going to be introduction or indoctrination. So we've talked about this. You're going to introduce your brand and establish credibility for yourself. The second would be pixeling. We're going to talk a lot about pixels in this certification. So if someone hits your website and you have the appropriate piece of code on your website, you're going to be able to pixel them, which means you're going to be able to add them to certain audiences inside of your traffic platforms, and you're going to be able to run ads to them in the future. So say they hit your website and they read one of your blog posts, you're able to pixel them so that later you can go back and run an ad. It's really just the concept of retargeting, but it's a big, really important goal for cold traffic is pixeling so that, so that you can build media and run ads to those people in the future. A third goal would be segmentation, and this is important too. So segmentation would mean, you know, say that they landed on our website and they read a blog post about email marketing. So we know that they're specifically interested in email marketing. You know, if we look at digital marketing as our really, you know, large niche, email marketing would be a sub niche. It would be a segment. We know that they're specifically interested in something, not just, you know, the realm of digital marketing. So what's important is that you know they're specifically interested and therefore you can make them more specific offers. So really what you're doing with cold traffic is not only introducing yourself, 
pixeling them so that you can speak to them later, but you're also figuring out a specific interest of theirs so that you can make them a specific offer later down the road. Now that you know who you're talking to, cold traffic, people that you've never met before, let's talk a little bit about what you're going to say and what exactly it is you're going to talk about. And all of that comes down to offers. And when I talk about offers throughout this certification, I'm not just referring to products or services um, that you can sell for money. I'm talking about things like blog posts and webinars and you know, low dollar offers and really anything that you can give your audience um, whether you're just giving it to them to establish yourself as an authority, whether you're asking for their email address, whether you're asking for money, um, we're going to use the term offers. So I'm about to give you a list of cold traffic offers. So before we get into creating your ad copy and creating ad images, we need to talk about what you're actually going to give them. Because if you don't give them something that they're interested in, you'll never succeed with paid traffic. Um, if you have the worst offer, no matter how great your ads are, or no matter how good you are at running traffic, you'll fail because it's not going to be something that your market wants. So keep that in mind. I'm about to cover a list of um, you know, different items that we would run to cold traffic that I've seen people run to cold traffic. There are definitely more um, that, that are appropriate. Um, I think these are the biggies, um, but if it's not on the list, don't feel like um, it's not appropriate to run to cold traffic as long as you're keeping in mind these people have never heard from you before. The first one would be blog posts, right? Um, pieces of content. So whether this is you know, videos on your site or written posts, however you're delivering the information, doesn't really matter. What's important with the blog post is that you're either solving an issue for them or you're giving them really informational um, uh, content about something they're interested in. All they're doing is clicking over to your site. You're not asking them for their email. You're not asking them to buy. You're giving, right? You're, you're giving them a gift. This is their first interaction with you probably. Um, so a blog post is a great place to send them to um, because they'll read, they'll see you as an authority and they'll start to build trust. Social media updates are great. It's a great way to show the personality of your business, share funny pictures, really speak to your target market you know, through a, a promoted post on, on Facebook or a promoted tweet on Twitter. Um, social media updates are a great first touch. Um, it might catch someone's attention and they'll think, who, you know, who is this business? Content videos. This is really along the same line as the blog posts. Um, you know, give them value, teach them something um, with your material. Podcasts, again, is also content, just in a different medium. We're talking audio here. So podcasts are a great way to introduce yourself to someone and really prove that you know what you're talking about before you ask them to buy. Lead magnets. If you're not familiar with the term lead magnet, so that's something that you're going to give in exchange for an email address. It's something that would be really desirable and helpful to your target market. For example, we have a lead magnet of blog post templates. So we ask bloggers, hey, you know, you don't have time to blog or you don't know what to write about, download these templates. Um, they'll show you exactly what to do and they'll save you time. All we're asking for in exchange for the blog post templates is an email address. That's how we generate leads. And what you'll see on a graphic uh, that I'll show you here in a little bit, lead magnets really fall in the category of cold traffic and warm traffic. Um, you know, you can take a lead magnet offer out to cold traffic and ask for their email address, but that kind of falls along the same lines um, as you know, a one hit wonder campaign that I was talking about earlier. It doesn't necessarily fall into a bigger system, but it's definitely something that you can do if you do need to generate leads really quickly for your business. And we'll talk about that 
in depth in our later lessons. Uh, but keep that in mind. Uh, we really want to lead with something uh, that doesn't ask the, the visitor uh, for their email address or to buy. But I didn't want to leave this off because it does live in both worlds. A quiz or a survey, it's a great thing to take out to cold traffic. You'll see that BuzzFeed is great. They're always running quizzes um, in your newsfeed. You know, what city are you supposed to live in? Or, uh, you know, quizzes really interest people. And, and that's a great thing to take to cold traffic and, and a great way to introduce yourself to someone. So I'm going to show you some examples now of ads and different offers um, that we make to cold traffic and that other companies make to cold traffic so that you can really visualize this. So here's a Facebook ad and this clicks over to a blog post about email marketing. So all we're doing is putting ourselves in front of people that we know are interested in email marketing. They're clicking over to a blog post and they're going to learn a bunch of cool information about email marketing. Um, they might not know us and we're saying, Hey, you know, email marketing is our biggest source of revenue. We call it the machine. We've outlined our email marketing process below so that you can create one too. Again, they're clicking over to the blog. They're realizing, Hey, digital marketer actually knows what they're talking about. Um, so this is a, a great way to introduce yourself to a market. Here's the promoted tweet um, where we're teaching people what we've learned about uh, Facebook ad campaigns. So just another traffic platform. And again, we're sending people to the blog here uh, to learn more about our Facebook ad campaigns. Here's a video. Um, and this video teaches people how to blog. So again, here's a content video. We are running ads to it. Uh, we're paying for this video to show up um, on YouTube, but it's just content. Um, they're going to learn about blogging. Um, and again, we're not going to ask them for anything. We're just shooting them over to our YouTube channel to learn more about blogging. Here are some examples from other companies. Here's a quiz or a, a survey example. This is a quiz for, it's a free social anxiety test. I thought this, this was very interesting. I actually took the test, um, but it says, what's your score free social anxiety test. And I believe this is an app that um, it, it's a paid app and, and they help you manage your social anxiety. But this is a great way to, you know, catch people up front. This is a great ad to run to a cold audience for them to take a test. Everyone wants to take the test. I, I don't think I have social anxiety, uh, but I took the test just to make sure. Right. Um, so this was a great example of, of a Facebook ad to a quiz or survey. Here's a sponsor LinkedIn, a sponsored LinkedIn post. Um, this is from Adobe and this is a white paper. Um, so, you know, white papers would appeal to a more corporate environment, um, which is why LinkedIn is a great platform for Adobe to run traffic. Uh, but just another example, um, this is going to click over to their website. Um, none of these ads are asking you for personal information. They're not asking you to buy anything. Um, they're really just giving you value up front. Here are some more examples. This is from IMS and this is actually a cat video. <laughs> it says at three months, kittens master the art of pouncing. What's your kitty the master of, right? So they're not selling anything. They're not asking you for anything. They're just going out to animal lovers, giving them a cute little uh, cat video that's going to catch their attention. And you might think, huh, you know, who's this brand? What do they have to sell? This is a great way to introduce yourself um, with, with a video or a social media status update um, that, that you do put money behind and run as an ad to cold traffic. This is a promoted tweet from Realtors and this is 10 cheap ways to increase a home's value. So this also clicks over to a piece of content. And what's really interesting about this, 
Um, you know, anyone who owns, owns a home would probably be interested in this, right? They're hitting a pain point. People want to increase their home's value, but they don't want to spend a lot of money to do so. This is a wonderful entry point. 10 cheap ways to increase a home's value. So if you're interested enough to click over to read more about this, not only are you gonna think if the content's good, you're gonna think, wow, these people know what they're talking about, but they're also going to know about you. Okay, this person probably you know, owns a home. Um, I hope that we've established ourselves as a, an authority um, so, that, so that when it comes time for them to sell their home, you know, we can have a part in that process. So think about how these are really the, the first touch guys of, of relationships and how this ad could turn into uh, you know, a customer down the road. Here's another example. Um, this is a Facebook ad, and this is the latest app trends of 2015. This is more of the white paper primary research kind of thing, um, but it's a great way to hit a market. If you have data, um, you know, digital marketing tr trends of 2015, um, you know, any way that, that you can appeal to the market um, from a really base level. So this was very smart. Basically, if you would be interested in apps at all, um, especially if you're marketing apps, of course you would want to see the 2015 trends. So you click over um, to their website, um, appannie.com, and they're going to educate you on the app trends of 2015. So another great idea to run to cold traffic. Here are a few more examples. So if you ever see on um, you know, a big news site, right? At the bottom of the blog post, you'll see um, you know, promoted content, or it will say um, related items from around the web. Uh, you'll use content discovery platforms to run these ads. And it's not something that a lot of people do in terms of paid traffic, but it is a great way to talk to cold audiences who have never met you. Um, so, you know, uh, this one's from New York Times, Instant Checkmate. So all of these are going to pieces of content um, and they're promoted stories so that you click over to their website and learn a little bit more about the business. Here's a YouTube ad that goes right to content. This is a basketball business. So they're teaching you, you know, a deadly three move combo, right? But this is purely content. They're paying for it to be shown. It's an ad but they're teaching people this basketball move so that you know someone who plays basketball would watch this video and think, wow, this guy really knows what he's talking about. I wanna learn more. Or he can retarget the person who watched that video um, and ask them for their email address in exchange for a workout. Um, they might click on their, their channel and go check out um, other videos that they have to offer for basketball training. So a great example of you know, a content video and, and giving value upfront to your market as an introduction. Uh, so just to wrap up this video, guys, here are a few offers and, and different ads that we would run to people who have never heard of us before, right? And the goal there is to introduce yourself to your market, to pixel them on your website, if at all possible, and also to segment them by interest. So for example, if this would have been about, you know, point guards specifically, this ad, then we would know that not only is this person interested in being a point guard or being better at being a point guard, um, they're not just interested in basketball, they're interested in that specific segment of the market.